All right, hey guys, we're just doing a mouse review speed run today. So I literally just filmed the super light one like two minutes ago. And so we're straight onto the uh, Viper V2 Pro here. This one was sent to me by Old Mate Tacular. I'll link him in the description as well. Make sure you check out his videos. Um, he gave me this to try. I was really curious. This is a custom made or custom painted and modified version. So it has a weight reduction mod. So you can see here on the bottom, uh, it's got like this uh, 3D printed um, base plate instead. And the front is also missing some stuff as well, but it doesn't affect in any way. Literally just a weight reduction mod and I love it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can buy this base plate on, uh, somewhere and do it yourself. It's not that difficult. Skates have been placed originally where they should be as if this was a stock, but with this base plate, you can also do whatever the hell you want to if you want to change how the skate orientation is. So anyway, um, quick description. So price is between 200 and 260 AUD. Uh, like I said with the Superlight, there's probably always one somewhere on sale. So just make sure you look around and don't jump into whatever store straight away. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, price is good. So in the box, it comes with all the normal stuff you would expect in the mouse box. So I can't be bothered opening this for you guys. If you want to watch that, there. if you want to know more about that, I'm sure there's infinitely other reviews out there. That's not what we're here for. Right, um, so these grips I put on are the stock grips it came with. Uh, I like these a lot better than the stock grips that the Superlight came with. So this is actually usable. Uh, the other thing that this mouse can do really well is that it has that uh, Razer Hyperpoling dongle if you are able to get that. Um, so I actually have, so he had both and so he gave those to me. Uh, 4K Hyperpoling dongle feels amazing. I recommend it. Uh, make sure you get it if you can, uh, but that's just about it. So yeah, not much to say. Uh, we'll go straight on to the other stuff. So build quality feels really good. Um, I have no issues with this mouse. Uh, obviously this is a slightly modified version. So this base plate is definitely a lot softer than if it came stock. Uh, but all in all, it's Razer, same thing, big brand out there. Nothing wrong with build quality that I've experienced so far. I think the mouse is pretty solid and sturdy. Uh, one thing I do need to note about was is that when I had the uh, normal version, like the not the modded version or custom painted, um, I really didn't like the stock coating. So super light coating was it's it's okay. Uh, I like I use grips on all of them, but I really didn't like the stock coating on the Viper. You might be different, but the plastic the plasticky feel from the Viper with stock uh, wasn't the best. Um, so I highly recommend grips on this mouse specifically and make sure you guys look into that. You could just use stock ones or even like buy aftermarket. I still think aftermarket ones are better, but yeah. Um, it's supposed to be 58, 59 grams, which means that it is a little bit lighter than the Superlight. Um, obviously right now I can't give you an accurate uh, comparison because this mouse is the modded version, so it's lighter. But realistically speaking, a super light weighs in at like 63-ish and this one weighs in at 58, 59. So little, little minor difference, um, nothing too significant. But when we get to weight distribution, I will talk about that more. Uh, scroll wheel, people like to talk about scroll wheel. Unfortunately, this mod actually kind of messed up with the scroll wheel. So I can't use this one to describe scroll wheel. But from memory, scroll wheel is also good. Um, I expect that to come from my like from these brands, from big brands like Razer and Logitech, their build quality and everything, in my experiences so far, have always been really good and there's nothing really to complain about that. If you're not a fan or you've been unlucky, then well, that's just that's just you thing. I can't help you, but this should be busting, yeah? Um, we're going straight onto the shape, right? I'm more of like a shape and performance person versus like, a, oh, the other features weigh in too much because I play competitively or I used to play competitively. I still kind of do. Um, other reviewers talk about it for a variety of games and different things and whatever, and I could care less. I just want to know what is going to make me play the best in the games I'm trying to play, right? That's what matters to me. Now, if scroll wheels really affect your gameplay, then I, I guess you can't really take this review for it, but from memory, I can tell you it's good. If you've used other mice and had no problems with their scroll wheel, I doubt you'll have any with this. Um, but I personally do not use scroll wheels in games, so that might be surprising to some, might not be, but that's just me. Uh, same thing with side buttons. So all in all, uh, yeah. For the shape, this mouse is, uh, as you can see, really flat, but it's long, right? So here's a side-by-side -side comparison versus the super light. I do not know how good that's gonna give you a view of, but yeah. Um, the TLDR is, this mouse is good. 
it's really good and i would highly recommend this if you're not like if you just want to get something as well because this is always readily available um it's on the larger end it's it's considered medium sized but i would say this is larger than many other mice that are being put out onto the market these days so if you're kind of that medium slash medium to larger hand size this is probably really good for you um it's really flat you cannot palm this right that's the end of story do not look into this mouse if you want to palm grip now if you are a claw grip or a fingertip gripper this is where you should look into this so because it's flat and long fingertip actually feels really nice it's really easy to move around there's no situation where you accidentally move it too far in it's like hits your hits the back of your hand and you're like oh shit it's turning into a claw or like i can't move this anymore the same kind of issue you would have with a super light like on the super light you have this kind of movement and then as soon as i do this i can't move it anymore because the back of the mouse is already touching my hand palm with this i can move it and pull it in a lot deeper because it's flatter right and so fingertip will work really well claw grip also works well because while this mouse is more flat and doesn't actually have that uh big hump towards the back to fill up your palm it's long right the mouse has been elongated so therefore like you know if the hump was really far back and aggressive your hand will curl up more so as a result you don't need as much length because it's being lifted into height to fill out your palm whereas the flatter the mouse the longer your hand like the more your hand has to extend out which means that if it's flat but long enough, you can also still claw it. It's just a bit more relaxed of a claw. Whereas on something like the Atlantis or whatever that has a bigger hump on the back, you would have a more aggressive claw, right? By aggressive claw, I mean like, oh, your fingers will be a lot more like stiff and like pinching hard to like control it. Whereas on a mouse like this, you're sort of like a bit more relaxed on your claw. Your fingers aren't exactly like in a position where you're like, oh, you're gonna fucking like pinch the thing to the death. You're just like relaxed and resting up there. But you could still aggressive claw this. Same thing with this though. You could still just um, relax claw it as well. That's purely up to personal preference. But essentially, um, this will naturally make you have a bit less of an aggressive claw, which to some is good, some is bad. But it works, right? It works really well. Shape is good. Sensor is amazing. The Razer Higher Focus Pro 30K Optical, needless to say, if you pair it with the 4K dongle, it's great. It's really great. This probably has some of the best internals, like internal specs of any mouse on the market. So that's definitely a big plus for them. Shape is good. Availability is good. I like everything about this mouse really. Um, I still prefer the Atlantis shape. This is what works for me. But if I had this mouse and I didn't have this and I was like, oh, you just have to use a Viper. I'm like, great, fine. I, I can do that. It's a really good mouse. That's all the rest I can say about it, right? Weight distribution on this mouse is actually really good. Um, I think Super Light was good, this is good. Atlantis is actually good. Um, you can check this out in the review for this afterwards. But there's really nothing nothing I can complain about this mouse. If the shape works for you, it works for you. Um, specs and everything, it's top of the line. So the only thing you really need to consider is shape. And I think this is a good shape. So you guys, like if you have the opportunity to try it, make sure you try it. Um, I think for people who find Starlight Medium still too small, this is the perfect solution. Uh, so I personally, that, that was me. I found the Starlight 12 medium to be a bit too small, uh, which I actually have here. So I'll bring this out and uh, fuck. here it is. So essentially they're very similar. This is a bit longer. This is a bit shorter. Um, I think they do kind of the same thing. Like they give you the same kind of uh, shape and feel and whatever. So if the Lionel Mouse medium is a bit too small for you, make sure you look into this. Um, the trade-off obviously is that this weighs a bit more, whereas the Starlight 12 is lighter. Uh, so you could look at, so like, if you if that does become an issue, make sure you look into the uh, base plate weight reduction mod, the weight reduction, and that should fix all your problems. Um, I would personally rec highly recommend the two of these mice for fast paced games, like playing Overwatch, playing Apex, especially. Um, if you're going into Valorant, <coughs> nothing particularly wrong there, like slower attack shooters, um, except personally for me, like these, these mice with bigger humps work better. But if I was to go back to being an Overwatch grinder, like I used to be, I might actually get off the Atlantis and go to one of these, right? I would recommend this because like I said in the other video, I'd rather, I would take the trade-off in stability for a bit more like easy to like easy movement because the mouse is flatter and lighter and therefore you have more flexibility in your hand. Uh, even though that means you have less rest on the palm to give it stability. But yeah. Uh, other comparisons to note. Uh, click click feel is really good. This is really nice and crispy to click on. Um, 
the super light is a bit lighter to click down, I feel like. Like it clicks easier, but it feels a bit more mushy. This is super nice and crisp. Um, I think they're both fine. I don't have any issues with clicking. And obviously the Starlight is still the hardest to click down mouse out of these four. Um, this is really the only comparisons I can give you in terms of, so for this compared to the others, uh, these two, Starlight 12 uh, and Viper V2, they kind of do the same thing. Um, just think of this, I, I think of this as Starlight 12 large, or like, or like medium large, whatever. Right, that, that's how I see it. I like it. Um, compared to the super light, it's kind of the same, but the length and everything, but the super light is definitely bigger hump than this one. Like Viper is flatter. Uh, I would still recommend the Viper over the v, uh, G Pro. I think like from just a specs point of view, this already destroys this Logitech. I think you can probably find them for the roughly the same price. So there's no price factor to be considered, but all in all, I just think this is just a better mouse in all aspects, right? And the Atlantis is, the other one I have here, which is a bit more different to the others. Um, this is solely for claw grip. I do not see you finger tipping this because there is this big hunt and a big hump. And there is like the, the, pl the places of this mouse, if you were to touch would be real uh, on a fingertip grip would be really far forward. And as a result, it actually throws off the weight distribution. The weight distribution on this mouse is good. It just gets thrown off compared to this, right? If you were to fingertip. But for claw, both of these work. It really depends on what works better for you. Um, I would say if you know for a fact you are just going to claw, you prefer that humpy feel in, the, in your palm and just want to use your fingertips for that micro, get the Atlantis. If you're a bit, bit of a both and you play like mini games and just want an all-rounder for claw slash fingertip, get this um, or this. Depends which one you can... The problem with this Starlight 12 is that it's not readily accessible and the size may or may not work for you. Uh, I'm on the larger end for hands. I'm like, I forgot what it was, like 20 times 11 or 12 or some shit, but that's me. Anyway, that's just a quick review of the Viper V2. Good mouse, buy it, right? If you can't, if you if you are hesitating, this is a good mouse. Um, yeah, all good. See you guys in the next one.